Hi there and welcome back. So far in this series we've looked quite closely at the different types of images formed by convex lenses. In this lesson we will move on to exploring images formed by concave lenses. These are thin in the middle and thicker at the edges. We will then see how a combination of lenses can help people who are either short-sighted or far-sighted see more clearly. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the nature, size and position of an image formed by a concave lens and describe how lenses are used to help people with different eye conditions. To start our investigation of concave lenses, have a look at what happens when we use a light box to shine three parallel rays of light through a concave lens. Look at what happens. The beams of light do not converge to form a focal point, but move away or diverge from a focal point on the other side of the lens. This is why concave lenses are also called diverging lenses. Let's investigate this interesting refraction of light further by looking at some ray diagrams. Here's the lens and the principal axis. F is marked on both sides of the lens and I have drawn in the object between F and 2F. Now I have drawn in two rays from the top of the object as I did before for the convex lens. The first ray passes through the center of the lens O and carries on. The second ray from the top of the object travels parallel to the principal axis until it reaches the lens. Now this ray is refracted away from the principal axis, so it appears to come from the focal point F found on the same side of the lens as the object. The point where these two rays meet represents the point where the top of the image forms. Since the bottom of the object was on the principal axis, we've drawn in the rest of the image here as a straight line perpendicular to the principal axis. Notice that the image formed is upright and smaller or diminished. This image cannot be projected onto a screen and can only be seen by looking through the lens. Can you see that the second ray of light does not travel to or from the image? So we can say that this is definitely a virtual image. What do you think happens when the object is moved towards and away from the lens? To help you decide, you could draw some ray diagrams like we did for convex lenses and then summarize your findings in a table. Have a look at my animated ray diagram. It shows how light is refracted through a concave lens as the object moves closer to the lens. From this diagram, it should be clear that no matter where the object is, the image formed by a concave lens is always upright, diminished and virtual. Did your ray diagrams look similar to mine for the different positions of the object? Here is an example of how you could summarize this information into a table. When the object was placed at infinity, that is far beyond 2F, the image formed at F on the same side of the lens as the object. The image was much smaller. As the object moved closer to the lens, the image got larger, but it was still positioned between F and the lens on the same side of the lens as the object. When the object was placed at F, the image was exactly half the size of the object. Even when the object was moved between F and the lens, the image still remained diminished and virtual. Now that we know how lenses form images, Let's see how lenses are used to help us see better. Most animals have eyes that use converging lenses to form an image on a light sensitive area called the retina. The eye is an extremely complex and delicate organ that functions remarkably well. It is able to look at things close up and far away. This is possible because the thickness of the lens can be changed by the movement of muscles called the ciliary muscles. As the thickness changes, so does the focal length of the lens. 
Remember, converging lenses that are thicker in the middle have shorter focal lengths than thinner lenses. So, to focus on something close up, the lens is adjusted by the ciliary muscle so that it is thicker in the middle. And to look at something further away, the lens is adjusted by the muscles so that it is thinner in the middle. Optometrists are people who have been trained to test people's eyes and prescribe lenses for glasses to correct their vision. So, who better to tell us more about how glasses work? Let's join Pendy as she meets an optometrist who can tell us more. Hello, Mr. Colson. How are you, Pindi? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Please, could you tell us how lenses are used to correct someone's vision? Right. Before I do that, let me first explain to you what a normal eye would look like. Okay. Then we'll go on to an eye that needs vision correction. We have a picture over here just to explain to you different characteristics of the eye. Mm. We've got the cornea. That's that transparent membrane in front of your eye. Okay. Behind that, we've got our lens, which is your focusing system. Okay. And right at the back here, we have our retina. So if light comes in from a distant object, mm -hmm. it's going to refract through the cornea. And after refraction, that light is going to converge. It's going to pass through the crystalline lens and after refraction through the crystalline lens, it converges even more and it forms an image on the retina. Right. In the case of a person with a vision problem, light does not focus on the retina itself. Okay. Light may focus in front of the retina or it may focus behind. If it focuses in front, that means that the refracting power of the eye is too strong, meaning that the convex power is too strong and is focusing the light in front of the retina. And in this case, we refer to it as myopia or short-sightedness. And Mr. Carlson, how would you correct for myopia or short-sightedness? Pindi, what we do is we can either correct with a contact lens or we can correct with a spectacle lens. It will be a concave spectacle lens, a lens that diverges light. So in other words, light entering the concave lens after refraction, light will diverge. Now that divergence of light is going to compensate for the excess positive power or convex power of the eye is going to compensate for that and by doing that it will push that image back onto the retina. It will work in both cases whether the eye is too long or if the refracting power is too strong the converging lens will compensate for the excess converging power of uh, the eye and in turn push that focus back. In the case of hyperopia, the refracting power of the eye is too weak. So after converging through the eye, mm -hmm. light focuses behind the retina. Now, this is also twofold. Mm -hmm. The refracting power is too weak or the length of the eye is too short. Oh. So to correct this, you'd use a convex lens? Absolutely. Just to show you what a convex lens looks like, a convex lens is thick in the center and thin on the edges. A cross section we can see over here from the side, you can see it's thick over there and thin on the edges. Mm -hmm. So is there a difference in compensation between a contact lens and a spectacle lens for the same eye? Pindi, yes. The whole effect is determined by the distance. For example, if we had a contact lens of a certain power, in the case of myopia, as you move the lens away from the eye, the diverging effect decreases. 
So what actually happens then in the case of the spectacle lens, in the case of myopia, the spectacle lens's power would be more diverging. The lens would be more divergent. In the case of hyperopia, it's exactly the opposite. As you move the convex lens away from the eye, the effect increases. So what we have to do there is, we have to make the converging lens less convergent. So does the eye change as you grow older? Yes, it does, Pindi. In the young eye, this crystalline lens is very elastic and it's very flexible. Okay. It can become very convex, more convex in power in its younger stage than when it gets older. As the eye ages, the lens starts to harden and it loses its ability to become more convex. That is why you'll notice older people wearing glasses to read with. Because it's got to the stage now where the lens cannot change enough to compensate for its working distance. So all what we do is we place a lens of uh, a convex lens in front to compensate for this uh, change that it should have made. Mr. Carlson, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wow, that was amazing. Isn't it interesting to know that the things that we learn in science, we can actually use in everyday life? I agree with Pindi. Wasn't that great? Now why don't you try this practical problem as your task for today? Imagine you're out camping and no one remembered to bring any matches to light the fire. You have noticed that there's a family nearby, two of whom are wearing glasses an old man and a teenager, whose glasses are more likely to be useful to you as a burning glass and why. I hope that you have fun with today's task. Make sure that you tune in for our next lesson when our friends Gugu and Pindi will be taking a field trip to explore more practical uses for lenses.